Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this introduction video to the React Fundamentals. So in this video, I will not explain everything that we will learn in this part of the course, but if you are curious, you can find a link down in the description uh, where you get a like a nice visual of the course content or depending on how you're watching this video, you can also check out the YouTube playlist or the timestamps in the description. Now, this video will be more of an introduction to React and why you should use it or not. So these are the four topics um, we'll go over in this video. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is a website versus a web application. The lines between both are sometimes a bit blurry and that's why I try to categorize uh, both as good as possible to give you a bit of an idea uh, what I mean when I'm talking about a website and what I mean when I'm talking about a web application. So usually a website has the intent to present products or services. And you can think about blogs, portfolios, landing pages, and so on. So let's go, for example, to this website of Berkshire Hathaway um, of uh, Warren Buffet. And as you can see, it's, well, obviously not the best looking website out there but it serves the purpose of informing you as a user to learn about what Berkshire Hathaway is about. And the same goes, for example, if we go to this website of Axon Mobile, um, which is, you know, it, this one definitely looks better and uh, we've got all kinds of information we can read. There's even a little bit of interactivity going on. Um, but, yeah, the thing, the only thing we can do right here is essentially read things, right? We can click on links and we get all kinds of information and we can read it, but there's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, coming back to web applications, you can more consider that being software running in a browser. And you can think about social media platforms, dashboards, um, editing programs, banking application, um, Think about Instagram, Google Docs, Binance, which is a trading platform. Those are all considered to be web applications. So if I go over here to Binance.com, you will see um, when I click right here, for example, we will, you know, there's a lot of things we can do right here, right? We can analyze the data and we can register an account. And this is just, you know, you see all the updates that are going on. This is really like a more complex website, right? This is something you would definitely consider to be a web application. So let's move on to um, SPA, which stands for single page application. And that is what React allows us to create. And an SPA is, as it says right here, it allows you to have dynamic updates of the current web page with data from a server uh, or not, uh, instead of loading entire new pages. And this causes very fast transitions and thus will feel more like a native app, like an app you download on your phone or install on your computer. And to give you an example of that, right here I got an example of a dashboard uh, tool, which is not a single page application. So if we head over here, now you can definitely consider this dashboard to be a web application uh, because you know there's like a lot of things going on here and we've got these updates and, and things we can hover over. But it's not a single page application because if I click right here on a Conti, just notice how the complete page refreshes. See, there we go. Now when I click here, we got like a complete page refresh. And as you notice that navbar right here is every time it's in the exact same place, right? If I click right here, it's still in the same place, but it didn't stay there. Like the whole application did a refresh. Now, if we go, for example, to this dashboard that was built with React, this is an example of a single page application. So if I click, for example, on uh, an email, you will see everything will stay on the page, but it's just that specific content that's updating. 
and you know when we do all these actions you know it, it pretty much just feels like we're using a native application so next up we have components and components are like a big thing in react you can kind of like consider it being small building blocks that eventually will create your app and What's nice is that we can reuse the same components in our application and that makes the whole code base much more maintainable. So if we want to, uh, you know, add changes or uh, if we need to fix a bug or even test the code, we only have to do it in one place in our application. And we will know for sure that in all the other um, pages that our uh, components are being used, those changes will be applied as well. And that's why you get like in React, these sort of what you would call a UI tree. So it's a it's a tree of UI components. And you can, can imagine that for some application, especially bigger ones, you can get like a huge like hierarchy of uh, small components. And, um, but that makes it really powerful. So the next thing is, that React is declarative. And declarative kind of like means that it is telling what to do instead of how to do it. And like telling how to do it is some more considered to be imperative. So, you know, this example right here um, might be a little bit different from like a web application perspective, but I think it really explains the point very well. So React is, you know, the library that you simply tell like, hey, I want dinner with broccoli and React will just, boom, serve your broccoli. Whereas with some other, let's say non-React applications, uh, things might be more imperative. So you really have to tell whatever you're using, like, hey, go to the kitchen, open the fridge, remove the broccoli from the fridge, cook the broccoli and then serve it. And this is something that React, React does under the hood. And again, this is a bit of a silly example, but especially if you have been in web development for a while, and this is your first um, encounter with React, you will find like a lot of things that seem like magic, right? But that is just the declarative nature of React um, doing a lot of things for you. So in the upcoming videos, we will be learning more about fundamental React concepts. And after that, we will take more of a deep dive into the more advanced concepts that both React and its ecosystem has to offer. So I'd like to see you there.